Okay, now we're gonna cut out this control head here. Which it's already marked on the back of this little square deal, so that'll snap in. We hope. <laughs> Should be able to just take this knife and not cut right through your leg, but scribe. out just like that it'll work just like that That went well. Should be able to take this. Make sure the fan, the numbers are on the left. Should be able to pop this in here. Ah, nice. Plug goes on the back of that one. Gently wiggle it on, give it a little support. And that one. Purple Yurple. Nice. I think we're there. In that so I think we're all plugged in. Uh, we are not plugged in. Mm -hmm. Try that again. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to overfill this a little ways. Okay, let's try this again. We got a little better funnel. Now we want to mix this about 60-40 for, well, it depends on your area, but I like mixing it 60-40 because it gets pretty cold here. And I'm not hitting the hole here. I just want to get it mostly filled up to the top here. And then we're gonna um, open up the bleeder screw on the engine head the cylinder head and then we're gonna get that we're gonna purge the air out of it that way but first I'm just getting this mostly filled up with this oh and then I I am a messy mess maker. Okay. We're gonna go to the back of the motor. 
Okay, we're back here at the engine and there's a little screw right there. I'm gonna loosen that and then that's gonna let the air out of the head and then we're going to uh, go back up front and keep filling the radiator until solid coolant with no air bubbles come out of that bleeder screw. But this is pretty much an eight millimeter screw. And here's the air coming out of there. I'm not gonna take it clear out, we're just gonna crack it like that. Now we're gonna go fill up the radiator till coolant comes out that. There's some little air bubbles coming out. I'm going to turn the ignition key on, turn the heater vent to hot, or the heater control to hot, and then turn the fan on one click, and that should open up the valve, and that'll even let us get more air out. Okay, what I'm doing to help us get the air out is we're going to turn the key on, turn this control to hot, and then turn the fan on one click. And what that's gonna do is open up the valve in here so we can help get more air out. Then we're gonna continue um, pouring coolant in the radiator and getting more air out of that right there. Once we got this topped off, we'll shut everything, start it, and bring it up to temperature. Okay, I shut this bleeder screw, left my wrench there, but we still need to top this off one more time. Too much too fast. Pretty well full. I didn't have to top off very much. And I am messy. Very messy. But now, we are going to start it and run it and then watch our temperature. It's at 99 degrees right now. I don't know if you can see that or not. Anyway, but you want to bleed everything with fan on, temperature to the hot, fan on, temperature hot, that way it has the valve open, that way we can circulate. Now it's just a matter of running it. Run it for a few moments, and then we'll shut it off, and then we'll, <clears throat> we'll bleed the air out of back here one more time. Okay, so I've ran it for a little bit. Temperature's like 140, so I'm going to shut it off, but leave the key on, fan running, heat on, and we're going to bleed the air out one more time. I might even bleed it two more times. I don't know. But. Alright, I'm going to go up front, add some coolant. It's going to start coming up there.
Okay, we'll shut this valve. Shut this valve. We're going to shut this leader screw. several times. We're going to keep opening this bleeder screw up, getting the water out. We're going to do this several times. We're going to open up this bleeder screw, get the air out, and then we'll top off the coolant again. And what we're doing is we're slowly getting all the air bubbles out of the system. Fire in the hole. Now this whole time I have the radiator cap off. What that's doing is letting the system purge there. Grab a little bit too, that'll help. On the temperature, you don't want to get too hot. I'm at 140. It should start to feel heat coming out of the manifold door of the heat recorder. And I am, I'm starting to feel a little heat, so now it's starting to burn. We're trying to fill up all those lines we added with cooling. While it's running, I think I'll open up that valve. Run it and cycle it until the fan comes in a couple times. Check for heat, yeah. We got heat coming down the manifold. Okay, so I think we're gonna, we're gonna hit 203, 204, 204 the fan comes on. We'll be there just momentarily. Fan should have kicked on, I can hear it. It should start taking over and cooling it down now. Yeah, it's dropping. It'll shut off at 194. cycled. I think we're ready to do some duct work. Okay, well we got into a little bit of arts and crafts when we were cutting that hole out for the heater controls, but um, <laughs> where's the camera at? Camera one, camera two, camera one. Um, so now we're really getting into some <laughs> freaking, where is that camera? All right, so now we're really getting into arts and crafts here. 
with all these hoses. We gotta route them and cut some holesies for our venties so we can get some Aries and heat when we're coldies. That's a lot of ease. Okay, so going from left to right, driver's side to passenger, our manifold down here. You know, you got, I don't know if you can see those or not, but maybe we can. Uh, here we got one, two, three, and then four is under there. So this is marked one. You can see that. Maybe you can. <laughs> anyway, this is number one. I'll flip this around. You don't have to see my face. Okay. Number one. Hooked here, going underneath all the wires. Underneath this bar and up to here. Now this other one, it runs down there. We'll leave that down there. As you can see, if it ran there, the shifter, it's miss, it misses it, so that's good. Anyway, that's how the first one is ran. So I'm going to run a zip tie around it, and then I'm also going to put a screw in it to keep it from coming off. Nice and tight. Get in here with this. What this is gonna do is lock that little dude on there. So it can't come off. Just like that. Okay, let's grab duct number two. That looks like the one with two on it. Dude should go down in here. I think it comes up to there. And then this one is going to run across. Over to here, to that duct. Okay, so I've got it ran underneath all the wires. Got it kind of ran back up in underneath here. That way, it, it's kind of going to help hold the wires up away from the shifter cable. Anyway, that's where it's going to live. Right there. And, get this one down. And then zip tied. It's pretty happy right now. Okay. Let's get this one secured. Okay, hose number three. Oh yeah, and my crew's here to help me today. Yeah, I must be on break. All right, hose number three, which is that one. One, two, three marks. Okay, let's see how this one's supposed to go. Okay, hose number three, right there. We're gonna have a vent there. A vent there. Which way does it work the best? Probably just like that. All right, that won't be an easy one to get secured. Really? There's a noise ordinance here, buddy. Kind of noisy. Oh God. There we go.
Okay. Now to hose number four. Should be going in up there. Okay. Hose number four. Okay, on this hose number four, I'm gonna hook the marked end, which is the shortest end, to the plenum. We're putting the longer duct, we're putting the longer duct up towards the top. Let's see if I can get this dude up into there. Oh God, okay, all right, there we go. Okay, see if we can make this happen here. Nope, he's in there. There we go. Oh, God. Oh, got one. Got one. Uh, really? vent up here all right and then that vent should reach our floorboard just fine okay we gotta start cutting some holes and putting the the little vents themselves in okay so the underside or upper part of the dash we got Everything's marked. Cut, center holes, center hole, center hole. And that's what we're going after right now, is we're going after getting our vent holes cut out. Alright, so arts and crafts begin here. Well, that was a struggle. That that plastic is thick right there. And right now I'm just testing to see how this fits. So I gotta trim it just a little bit. But getting there. Okay, got those pretty well trimmed and cut out. And what I do do, because where these latch into the plastic here, um, on this end and this end, I chamfer, I put the, the blade at an angle like this, so I kind of chamfer it, make it just a little bit thinner. That way these will snap in there really nice underneath those edges. So chamfer these ends at an angle a little bit, and then these will, pop in but we don't want to put them in yet because we're gonna hook our hoses up through one put this dash in or pull our hoses up through our ducks hook them to this and then we're gonna snap them down in. okay now we got to do our round holes Okay, um, next thing I gotta do is, is pop this old jockey box out of there and we're gonna drill some holes where our ducks go, two holes on the lower part. Okay, the way we're going to position these vents 
is I'm actually going to position this vent right here to go straight down because there's actually more room right here for it and it's going to blow directly on your feet which is nice and then the other one I'm going to put right there because it's really the only spot there is it has enough room also I mean you put it here you could put it right there pointing that way and that one pointing that way um, but I want to point them more directly down at your feet uh, so we're going to position this one there and this one here get these holes cut. All right. I like how that came out. I really like how that came out. That's going to blow directly down on your feet. Okay, now that we got all of our, all of our holes cut, and I got the lower and the upper part of the dash cleaned up before I put it back in, <clears throat> there is the bracket that we took out that we need to put back in. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Go after that. So we're gonna take that kind of like, kind of like that. Oh, oh, perfect. There we go. Got that back in there. Let's see, we need a screw, a couple of push pins. Push pin, push pin. It goes in the face of this too. And then that one, we're gonna have to have an extension on that. Haha, <laughs> got it. Okay. This is right why you need a little bit longer duct up here so you can make this bend and get this hooked. And if you ever have to get into the dash, peel the dash out, you got a little bit of play. Got to get these up and hooked in now. These cuts are meant to accommodate this right here, so that for sure we want to get in there in position, like so. So, okay, and I think the main thing is, is this the way this caps on here. Get there's a few that come up through the 
bottom down here. Okay. Flummy. Flummy flum. Super sticky. Nice. So slip it down in here. Fasten battery here. Okay, now we're we're applying this little foam strip to the bottom of these bins. Nice straight edge here. Just like that. Okay. This one goes under that one, just like so. Other side. Don't forget, check your coolant um, before you ride, and uh, after a few days, keep checking on it, because there could be some more air bubbles, and as you drive and ride, after about 30 miles or so, it can it could work out a few more bubbles. But anyway, um, keep an eye on the coolant for next few rides, and always, always check your coolant, oil, air filter before you ride. All right, that pretty well concludes this build. Um, Thanks for watching and stay warm when you're out there with the Polaris, Pure Polaris heater system. Right on. All right, laters. All you gotta do is check your shit before you ride. <laughs> Sorry, all you gotta do is just uh, check everything before you ride. Check your coolant, check your oil, check your air filter and uh, just walk around the rig every time before you ride. You might catch something and save yourself some hassle. All right. Laters. All we got to do is go for a ride now.